Kuranga Homa. In today's video, it's the school holidays, and I'm working on some projects for the medieval study that I'm going to do next term. Uh, so today we're going to be doing some extreme whittling uh, using um, a big machete. So this is um, something that needs to be done with parental supervision, uh, and hopefully if they've got the right tools at home, we're going to talk about that in the video. But if this seems like your sort of thing and you want to stick around and watch, I'll see you in the video. So in today's video what we're going to do is we're going to be making um, a medieval sword out of a piece of wood. Now this piece of wood I harvested off a fallen tree uh, in my property um, and what happened was we've had a big storm recently uh, on Tuesday just been. Um, winds were up to 200 k's an hour in certain parts of um, Auckland, New Zealand. I was lucky my property pro we probably reached over 100 but um, yeah we're luckier than other places and a few trees fell down around my property no, no serious damage was caused just just to basically nature mother nature sorting herself out uh, and one of the trees fell down and I've got this nice piece of wood here now um, I'm going to turn this into um, a medieval single-handed broadsword now there's lots of different broadswords that they used during the Middle Ages uh, common there were the what's called the long sword which is a two-handed sword I'm just going to make the standard issue sword that a, uh, uh, someone of the time period might carry um, I'm aiming to try and do like a more of a Viking style Ufbert, um, or Ufbert, uh single-handed broadsword because it's about that size um, you can see the diameter is really really thick okay and so that's what I'm working with okay it's really meaty piece of wood um, and the tool I'm only going to really basically use one tool to do this um, I might use some um, sorry some power tools to finish off with at the end but um, when I was a boy I learned to from a from my childhood friend how to whittle and um, he used to do everything with um, machetes and stuff like that and so I learned how to do it that way um, and I'm going to be using this. This is my special wood carving machete. This is a Fiskars pruning machete. Uh, it's also called a sling blade or a cane knife. And basically what it does is when you're chopping wood, I particularly use this for chopping down bamboo for making stuff. Uh, if, it, if it doesn't straight away cut with the blade, it, the, what the object rides up the blade and gets caught in the hook and slices off. But this is also really, really good to use for whittling. Um, so if you want to try this project at home, um, you need to you, you need parent supervision for a start because this is obviously a big knife but also um, your parents or your dad or mum might have something called a draw knife at home and a draw knife is probably the proper tool that a carpenter would use for this sort of thing and it looks like a giant blade with two handles on it and you use it to pull the wood shavings toward yourself now the method that you're going to see me use is with the machete I'm going to push the wood shavings away from myself and that's how you actually get all the um, wood to come off okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to move to where I'm going to do this uh, and I'm going to probably I'm going to switch it to time-lapse I give a couple extra instructions and I'm going to switch to time-lapse and you're just going to see me work through the process now in all honesty this may take a few days to get through um, the reason being is um, the, any whittling is a, is a bit of a process um, and also I'm gonna to have to refer to um, photos and stuff like that just to make sure that I'm getting it right the hardest part because I'm gonna because this the whole thing is gonna be whittled as one piece so it's not gonna be a blade attached to something else because that's just not doesn't really work well with wood um, and what will happen is if you if someone decides that they want to play with it there's a really really good chance that it'll break so what's going to happen is I'm going to try and do it as one whole piece. So in this piece of timber is going to be the handle, the pommel, the hilt, um, the guard, and the blade, all whittled as one piece. This is the most ambitious thing I've ever whittled before. I have done a lot of whittling in the past, mostly things like uh, katana and samurai swords, and I'll probably show you my, my favorite one at the end. Um, but they, they've never, I've never whittled them with guards and things like that. I've normally just whittled them. It's basically a blade on a stick. And it used to be th something that we'd play with in the forest as children. Um, so this is, yeah, a really, really ambitious build, this one. Um, also, it's going to be 
quite interesting to see how I, I'm able to get some of the bend out of this piece of wood but uh, we'll see how we go we'll see how we go so the first thing I need to do is I need to figure out the straightest part of the wood now um, this angle here looks like it's the straightest but um, and it looks like I've probably got the, the right amount of diameter to get the blade all in. Now, with, whenever you're whittling something in wood, especially something like a sword um, to play with, the last thing you want to do is find that you've whittled it too skinny and it'll break easily because you know you whack it against things by accident or whack it against things on purpose. Uh, and the last thing you want to do is go to all this effort and find that it's going to snap. Now, just while I remember too, I, I did something called shucking this. Uh, there's lots of other terms for it. I, I'm used to calling it shucking. And so basically what that means is just I've peeled all the bark off using the machete. And so then I've left it for two days to dry. Because you can't whittle anything that's wet. You'll find that your, the blade of your draw knife or your machete or whatever you're using isn't going to bite into the wood and it's just going to bounce off and skim. And that's how you're going to cause major accidents. Um, you know, cut your fingers, your leg or something silly like that so yeah you let it dry first and it's going to you find it much easier so when i look at it now the straightest part is probably there so, like that. so i'm looking at the blade being that way and that that's pretty good because that means i can cut out this bit here okay so I'm going to switch to time lapse now and I'm going to crack into it. What you'll see me do is I'm, going to, I'm sitting on like a little, an old beer crate and what I'll do is I'll stick the, object, the wood between my legs and sit on it and use my body weight to pin the piece of wood in place while I work the piece of wood. Now um, there are places that you can get um, whittling stands and things like that which is like a special wood horse that you stick the object in and when you push down on a pedal it locks the piece of wood into place so that you can use a draw knife but because of the technique I use a draw knife is pulling toward you so you need to lock the piece of wood in place so it doesn't fly toward you in this method I'm sitting on it just because I'm pushing away so um, you see how I do it um, and it'll be on time lapse so yeah stick around and I hope you enjoy what I'm doing This is where I'm at now. You can see by the look on my face I'm puffed out. It is quite physical work. Um, sorry, just wait for the helicopter to pass over. Um, so what you can see is because of the wood, it had a big bend in it. But I had to work to that side because it kind of it didn't so it twisted in two different directions, so it bent one way and twisted back the next on two different sides. So what I had to do is pick the straightest side and work as that being the um, essentially the spine of the work or the blade of the piece. So you can see you can see how much I've whittled off in thickness. It's about the same that side. So it's about like it's like a cricket bat now. Um, and I'm trying to avoid getting too close to the heart of the wood yet. I don't want to get near there yet. Um, because it's better to have um, material to play with and remove and remove too much and basically have to chuck it and start all over again because I obviously won't get another chance at this because this was off a fallen tree and I don't want to go and just cut down a tree to make a sword if that makes sense so um, now what I've decided to is because it's pulling so far over if you look at it um, if I keep going the way the blade is going now I'll end up with a mass, like a like a sword that, that's like that and obviously because it's wood and not metal I can't just bend it back the other way now I could probably 
save the blade by either lopping a piece of the top off and working back in. But what I figured is I'm going to make it a little bit shorter because Viking swords weren't super long anyway. Um, and so I'm going to, that's basically where, my, this is where my hand grip is here and from this little notch that I cut is where I'm going to carve the pommel. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start working on the handle. Um, but I probably, and what I've found too is it's still quite damp the further in I get, so it hasn't had long enough to dry. So the wood shavings I'm getting started off as nice long bits, but now I'm getting like shard pieces like that. And you did see that technique where I was kind of standing over it, hacking into it. And that was to really work off, because I've got, there's quite a few knots in it, and I just really wanted to work out those large pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to have to call it a day and let it dry out a little bit more before I start working on the handle and the pommel because that's going to take a smaller knife and that was that little tiny pocket knife you saw um, they have a special name I think they're called a karang but I'm not sure so I call it my tiger claw knife it's really good for whistling and you know notching and stuff like that um, so for now this is part one um, but that's where we're at now we've got the basic part down um, we'll keep working on this tomorrow and we'll start working on the handle I just need to let it dry Kakite I'll see you in tomorrow's video